connectivity, the connected generation. So today we're going to be exploring what it means to be connected in this day and age. But before we do that, we need to look back at how people connected in the uh, architecture and design industry back when. So imagine this, you know, during probably some of your time, you know, some we have different generations in the room, and we have also the newer generation. But this is how essentially the tools that we use in the drafting studio in an architecture firm. We have this lamp, you know, the typical lamp, and then the ruler, and of course, you have your drafting table. So that's typical. And how did we connect uh, pre-millennial times? I would, you know, call that a pre-millennial workplace. How did we connect back then? The connection was between, you know, you, you learn from a master. So apprentices back then, you know, learn from the master. You connect or you align yourselves with the master because you wanted to experience that learning. You wanted to absorb whatever learning it is. And also the master in exchange connects with you as an apprentice by, um, by encouraging you and also by energizing you because you get some energy if you're a little bit older, you get energy from the younger generation. So that's how it was um, during that time. And from there, you know, that drafting studio, you relate with your master and your apprentice. Then you get to build these buildings. This is a view of the pavilion at Talies and West that Frank Lloyd Wright did. As you can see, I mean, these apprentices are building it, although I don't know what, I don't know about the, the clothes that they're wearing. I mean, they're too well dressed, if you ask me, to be doing construction work at that time, but maybe it was for photo opportunity purposes. But that's how you connected and the tools that you use to connect with people to come up with a finished product, which is the final building. And so let's look at how I experienced that. So I've experienced a portion of this because I was born or I was brought into architecture at that time at the turn of the technology or an advancement in technology. And we begin with identifying why we connect. So we connect because we wanted our needs met and the need to absorb information or to acquire knowledge. And just like the Jedi, you know, the apprentice and the Jedi in Star Wars, you need a master to be able to learn from. And in exchange, you need uh, the apprentice to teach. So there's like a mutually beneficial connection. And while I was at Taliesin, I also connected with the different apprentices that came from all over the world. So to me, that is one way of knowing about other cultures, opening my mind and understanding the knowledge that they have that is so different from my own background, which again, it's like a great opportunity by immersing yourself through learning by doing in the Taliesin community. And this was how I did it while living at Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin. So one great example was this wall. One of the hallmarks of Taliesin was they teach you how to do construction work and to build the desert masonry wall. And how did we connect? You need to be able to connect with the people you're working with so that you'll be able to build this. And also the knowledge, because this technique has been transferred from one generation of apprentice to another. So imagine my generation of apprentice was still doing the same technique that Frank Lloyd Wright pioneered. And this is one example. We all connected with each other and the same technique has been applied even to this day when you would do a desert mason wall. And this is um, ubiquitous in Taliesin West. 